Thank you, Jen. Uh, you've been telling migrants from right there for a month now, all the way back to February 10th, that now is not the time to come, but they are coming in bigger numbers every day. So do you have a messaging problem? Well, I would say that in the last administration, we had a morality problem and uh, children were being pulled from the arms of their parents and kids were being set, uh, sent back on a treacherous journey. And that's not the approach of this administration. So certainly we understand that means there will be more kids who are crossing the border. We made a policy decision that that was the right humane step to take. But I think it's also important for people to understand that the vast majority of people who come to our border are turned away, are sent back uh, to their countries. What we're talking about here are unaccompanied children. And what our focus is on is ensuring that there are uh, safe places for these kids to go that have access, where they have access to educational resources, health uh, and medical attention, uh, legal assistance as needed, and that we can expedite the vetting so that they can get to families and sponsors uh, where they can uh, have their cases adjudicated. But since the last administration is gone, tomorrow is 50 days of Biden. There are migrants showing up wearing T-shirts that say, Biden, please let us in. And candidate Biden is the one who said, I would end this notion for the first time in history that people seeking asylum have to be in squalor on the other side of the river. Why doesn't he come out and just say, now is not the time? Well, he actually did an interview with Univision about a week or week and a half ago where he conveyed a similar message. And we've conveyed that at every opportunity that we have. I will say we, we are, as you noted, almost 50 days in. We are dig digging ourselves out of a broken and dismantled system. Roberta, uh, Ambassador Jacobson referenced this in her opening as well. When it comes to engagement with countries addressing the root causes, we couldn't start doing that until January 20th. There are programs like the relaunching of the Central American Miners Program, which was ended by the prior administration in 2017. And that meant that uh, that, that program, which would have allowed for people to apply from the region, we had to restart that program. So we're working to fix the mess of the last couple of years. It's going to take some time, but this is clearly a priority for the president. We're looking at a range of options, uh, which include the opening of additional facilities. Uh, it includes uh, steps we can take to expedite the processing. It includes uh, uh, application and implementation of these CDC guidelines that were just came out that allow for more uh, children to be housed safely in these facilities. So we're looking at every option possible to help address the challenges we're facing at and the border. And you mentioned those CDC guidelines. Does the White House think it's a problem that when the CDC tells these migrant shelter facilities that they can be at full capacity if they are careful about COVID, many of them do, but when the CDC tells schools that they can open in person at full capacity, many of them don't. Are, is there a school in particular that you have as an example that didn't do that? Are most schools in this country at full capacity with in-person learning? Uh, are, is there a specific school, though, that is not following the CDC guidelines of, of implementing the mitigation steps so they can reopen? I mean, the CDC is saying schools, you can be at, at every school can be at full capacity. What the, the, know, CDC guide, the CDC guidelines, just to be clear, because I think this is very important to be very clear and specific That's on, they, they gave eight mitigation steps that schools can take to safely reopen. A number of schools have actually recently reopened. Schools in uh, Washington, D.C., some have. Schools in many districts across the country. But each school district needs to make the decision about whether they are able to take those mitigation steps. The president has also been clear. Some of these school districts need additional funding. There's $160 billion in this package that he's going to sign into law later this week. The Secretary of Education will be quite focused on working with school districts to help them reopen. But more school districts are reopening. More kids are in classrooms every single day. But since they are not all back from an administration position or from your perspective, have the Border Patrol unions and the HHS unions been easier to work with than the teachers unions? I, I think that's a, a little bit of mixing different circumstances. Uh, I would say that uh, it's, it's children all in tight quarters. Uh, I, I mean, a classroom. <laughs> Not quite. Not, funny. Uh, uh, not quite. I, I would say that let, let's let's take a responsible approach to the two issues. Okay, one is schools reopening. There's been eight mitigation steps that have been announced by the CDC to implement. Right. Yeah. Every school district is going to work to implement those on a timeline that is 
uh, they can effectively do. Many school districts are reopening, right? Many are reopening every single week and day and week, right? That is a different circumstance than what we are seeing at the border. And the HHS oversees the, these facilities, right? They're working with, uh, they're working on ensuring we can have more kids safely. They are working to implement CDC guidelines, but they are different circumstances. And certainly we're working with the school districts and we're also working with HHS to open these facilities or to ensure that kids are treated uh, with safety and care in these facilities. Okay, go ahead.